I keep encountering people who believe that the September 11th attacks were an inside job. There are often noticeable similarities with religious ideas. For example, I can't help noticing how the contradictory claims of different religions correlate with the varied conspiracy theories regarding whether it really was airliners which flew into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon, or missiles, or remote-controlled airliners or drones, whether the planes contained explosives or not, whether the collapse of the towers was due to a controlled demolition or even a nuclear-powered demolition, and so on. Now, I have no vested interest in what has become known as the official story, or any other theory about what exactly happened on that terrible day. As with any other area of inquiry, I try to approach it scientifically, by keeping speculation to a minimum and working with the known facts and building up a case from there. The truth of what happened is of paramount importance, and part of getting to the actual real truth the reality untarnished with emotional bias is to critically examine the various theories which people have. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to compile a detailed report, but I'm speaking as someone who used to be a lot more anti-establishment and scientifically illiterate. I was taken in by the demolition theory, especially regarding Building 7. However, what I came to realise was that the truther authors and documentary makers failed to show both sides of the building before it collapsed. They kept repeating controlled demolition, a few small fires, prior knowledge of the collapse and Larry Silverstein's use of the word pull. I now know that pull does not only mean detonating the explosives, it can also refer to getting the firefighters and rescue workers out of a building which is buckling after extensive damage from fire and debris and in obvious, imminent danger of collapse. The message the so-called truthers kept repeating was that no steel-framed skyscraper had ever collapsed because of fire. What they seemed to gloss over was the fact that airliners hit them and seriously compromised their structural integrity, which was further weakened by fire damage. I keep asking them, what else did you expect to happen? Why invoke explosives at all? Another contradiction is between those who believe that the US government had prior knowledge of a terrorist plot but let it happen, and those who believe that the US government orchestrated the whole thing, and that the Islamic hijackers and bin Laden were just patsies. I don't have any more information available to me than the next person with an internet connection, and I wouldn't be surprised if some individuals within the US administration had some idea of such a plan of attack and I'm sure that there is greater incompetence and inefficiency emanating from the White House than those in charge would like us to know about. But most of the conspiracist claims seem so far-fetched and implausible that I, for one, believe that the official story is more likely to be the most accurate account of what really happened. I like to think that the more you study a subject, the more knowledgeable you become about that subject. Similarly, a detective working on a case is more likely to uncover what really happened if he or she spends more time interviewing people and examining the available evidence. So I would now put myself forward as an example of someone who kept asking himself, could I be wrong about this? And gradually I came to the conclusion that I was wrong. Some have called me an apologist for the official lie, but I don't think that is an accurate description. I'm simply a sceptic with nothing to lose, or gain, from anything other than the truth of reality. It really is that simple. It's important for us to be aware of how easily we can be led astray, either deliberately or by deluded people. The method which works best for me is to continually ask questions, including, could I be wrong about this?